Okay, here in part six, we're going to do a polymorphism introduction. So the type of the object must be the same class or a subclass of the type of the variable. If not, the type of the variable would imply that the object would have methods that it might not have. This might not make sense yet, but I do want to remind you of part one, where we looked at the fact that there's a difference between the type of the variable and the type of the object. Okay, so remember the type of the variables, that's label next to the variable. The type of the object is actually kind of what stuffed animal we have. So the type of the object, that thing must be the same class or a subclass of the type of the variable. So that's that left-hand side. And if not, then the type of the variable would imply that the object would have methods that it might not have. Let's look at an example of this. Okay, so I have... Um, three situations. The top one, a microwave variable is referencing a cat object. Middle one, a tiger variable is referencing a cat object. And then a cat variable is referencing a tiger object. And I want you to pause here to think through which of these do you think should work? It's important to remember that programming languages are designed by humans and so it like should make sense. So your intuition about how the programming language should work is actually really relevant. So try and think through which of these do you think should work? You should pause here and I'll keep going. Okay, so I have the first two up, which do not work. So imagine the scenario where I have a microwave variable referencing a cat object. That's what I've got on the top. I've got that microwave referencing a cat. Well, think if I have a microwave reference, I would typically be able to use that microwave reference to call a bunch of microwave methods. That's how we use references, as we can call methods on them. But do you think the cat object is going to have any of the microwave methods? The cat has like a sleep and a say hello method, but those aren't methods that we would even expect a microwave to have. So here it doesn't compile because having a microwave reference point to a cat, which isn't in the same inheritance hierarchy, would imply that a cat has methods that it does not have. Okay, my next example, a tiger reference is referencing a cat. This one also doesn't work. And remember, the tiger class has methods that its parent does not have. It added that swim method. And the cat object, it doesn't have a swim method, so I can't use a tiger remote control or a tiger reference, which would then imply that I could call a swim method on the cat. So the key thing is that the type of the object must be the same class or a subclass of the type of the variable. And if not, the type of the variable would imply that the object would have methods it might not have. Okay, let's look at an example that does work. Example six, I have a cat reference that references a tiger. Does a tiger have all the methods that a cat has? Yes, yes it does. We're used to seeing situations where the type of the object was the same as the type of the variable, but here we have one where the type of the object is a subclass or a child class of the type of the variable. So here our last example does compile because a tiger is a type of cat. And so we can reference a tiger with a cat reference. Okay, so big picture, the type of the object must be the same class or a subclass of the type of the variable. And if not, the type of the variable would imply that the object would have methods that it might not have.